From the mid-1930s, Germany created several army research centers to test new weapons and technology. But the largest and the most impressive one was the Hillersleben Proving Ground. The site was built between 1935 and 1938. The test site lies between Hillersleben in the south and Gardelegen in the north in central Germany. Its long axis is about 30 kilometers. Several little towns were demolished for the space needed. The entire area was deforested and the existing forestries, as well as the inhabitants, were forced to move elsewhere. As the proving ground of the German weapon office, its main mission was to develop and test field artillery pieces and ammunition. Along the range, multiple firing positions were furnished, identified as Platz or Place A through Platz I. On Platz B, devoted to testing of concrete and armor-piercing projectiles. A tank firing range was also established. Almost 75 million marks were allotted for construction and facilities. 70 million marks had been expended by October of 1943 when major construction was suspended, but the construction and the development of the site was going on until the very end of the war. Some of the largest and most powerful German weapon systems were tested here, like the Mörser Karl and the gigantic railway gun, the Dora. An estimated 200,000 rounds per year were fired for the research, development and testing of artillery ammunition. The main firing range was a cleared strip about 28 kilometers long and 625 meters wide. The main firing front was situated at the southern end. One of the strangest constructions of the proving grounds was the gantry firing superstructure, which made it possible to fire vertically downward. This was done to test the roofs of fortifications of the Maginot type at a point-blank range. Replicas of those had been built alongside the track of the gantry. Direct next to the fortification, there were 15 emplacements for tank turrets, each with a connecting room for servicing the turret. A gantry of 150 tons capacity was serving the complex. A relatively unknown but important armaments conference was held at Hillersleben Proving Grounds on the 6th and 7th of June 1943. This conference was presided by Reich Minister Albert Speer and attended by leaders from the armaments industry, high-ranking Nazi officials, as well as senior officers. The program consisted of meetings and demonstrations of the latest and greatest German, as well as captured equipment. On the 5th of June, the day before the conference at Hitlersleben, Speer and Goebbels gave speeches at a mass rally in the Berliner Sportpalast. The audience consisted of some 10,000 armaments workers and party members. Speer reported on the great successes achieved by the armaments industry. He presented various statistics on how the production of munitions, weapons, and tanks had increased since 1941. The numbers were more than impressive. 
Compared to 1941, monthly production of munitions increased sixfold. Speer could not thank the industry workers and leaders enough. The numbers were remarkable indeed, but chiefly propaganda. It is noteworthy that all numbers were given as percentages instead of absolute units. Otherwise, it would become all too obvious that the numbers paled against those of Germany's enemies. Speer's speech was followed by that of Goebbels, outlining the current political and military situation. The existing crowd listened curiously at the word of the ministers and interrupted their speeches numerous times with thunderous applause. When the meeting was over, Speer and Goebbels led the industry leaders to buses that took them to Hillersleben. Here they would confer and witness the new weapon developments with their own eyes for the following two days. Apart from discussions, there was also time for demonstrations. Remarkable was the presence of a captured American M4A1 Sherman tank named War Daddy II. War Daddy II belonged to the US 1st Armored Division and was captured in Tunisia in February of 1943. A large propaganda campaign was launched in the early June of 1943 during which the abilities of the Feindpanzer or enemy tank were compared with those of the latest German designs. The demonstration at Hillersleben featured War Daddy II driving up a slope which it was unable to climb, while the new German Panther tank did make it. Some of the photos showing the Sherman and Panther climbing the hill were used in propaganda campaigns praising the superiority of German tank design. In April of 1945, the American 30th Infantry Division and the 2nd Armor Division arrived to Hillersleben. The US troops were immediately impressed by its tremendous size. From 1945 to 1994, the Soviet Red Army used the site. Today, the Altmark military training area with the Bundeswehr's combat training center is located here. I hope you enjoyed this episode and to make sure you don't miss my future work, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel and press the bell notification button. Thank you and see you in the next video.